Say, uh, who goes there? I have a weapon. Just me. Ah, the little finch returns to the nest. Empty handed? <laughs> it is here. This can help you get your wares out from the harbor. Ha! Huh. I never doubted you for a second. Come, let us enjoy a cup for the memories. I will even make your favorite. What did you find there? Who was behind it? A man by the name of Javid. He was working for someone, looking for an artifact. An exotic hairpin. It is important somehow. I need to find out why. I must. You have changed, little Finch. Or should I just say, Finch? When we last met, you were a street thief. Now, I hope you know what you are searching for. Sometimes, it is best to leave the thorn in, lest you bleed dry. Now, for what was promised to me? An invitation to the auction. It is only given to esteemed guests. Do not ask me where I got it from, unless you want lies. With that scroll, you can get in without having to fit yourself in one of my boxes. <laughs> that was your plan. Men have endured worse to reach their goals. Assalamu alaikum. I was sent by a friend of yours who was worried for your safety. As you can tell from the horse's head, she was right to be. We do not know what to make of this. Let me help. Perhaps I can find out what happened. We would be grateful. Was this your horse? He is claimed by Hades now. Not only do I have to worry about Baghdad's ridiculous thirst for coin, now I must be concerned about my livestock! Malaka! <sighs> Rest in peace, Legum. What happened here? It happened in the dark of night. I could not see well, but I saw someone, I think. I cannot be sure. This is a work of intimidation. Someone is trying to prevent your arrival. La, uh, who? Who would do such a thing? I have no enemies, no bad blood. There could be worse fates if you continue down the road. Let me escort your crew to the gates. You would do that for us? Shukran, God bless you. Quickly, get us away from here. Let us move. The city is not too far. Come, we should leave this place, quickly. Here we are. A thousand thanks, Ya Sayyidi. Baghdad is not safe. Rumors swirl through the markets of merchants dragged from their stalls. Have you heard of such injustice? Who would do this? Rumors say they target the Dimiyun, traders who are not from here. The Abbasids want a stake in all businesses. As long as there is coin, lives are secondary. The note dropped by the guards was from someone called al Ankab. This person is the one behind the attack. Hmm. I overheard the guards refer to the tax collector as al Anqa, Which was odd. Because is the Anqa not female? Tell me his name and where I can find him. Suhail lives in a mansion west of Karkh. Be careful, friend. I doubt he works alone. Thank you, friend. Wafaqaq Allah. Our protocol hidden one returns. Finally. You found the path back. What do you have for us? The one we are looking for is a Dimiyun. Someone out of Baghdad. You are certain? I found proof. They were working with the tax collector and the harbor master. One used the guards to harass and extort coin from the Dimiyun. The other seized goods at the docks. Extortion, I understand. But seizing goods? More objects from these ancient beings they worship? They are looking for a rare hairpin imported from the East Road. It will be up for auction at the Da'irat al-Mal. An official invitation into the auction. Now, we have a way in. Well done. Our target has to be someone connected to both Al-Anga and Al-Kululu. Someone working closely with the officials. Informers heard whispers of the Khalifa's treasurer. In recent times, they have been quite involved in the businesses of Kah. 
Someone like that will no doubt make an appearance at the Da'irat al-Mal. We should prepare, so I will scout ahead. Meet me near the souk when you're ready. Not a lot is known about this person. Underestimating your opponent is a fool's folly. Worried? I will tread carefully. The plan is simple. Enter the auction as a merchant wishing to bid on exotic artifacts. We know they want the hairpin. And we know they will be at the auction. They already let it slip through their fingers once. When the hairpin appears, I will watch the crowd and make sure to obtain it. That will secure a meeting with this treasurer. I am fully confident they will bid on it, whatever the cost. Yes. I will gather as much information as I can about this treasurer before the auction starts. For someone in their position, there will be no lack of whispers. The first feather without a head. It is your duty to find the right one. Do not let yourself get distracted. Focus on the mission at hand. It does no one good to linger on things that do not exist. This is real. I understand. Silence is better for the wise, and how much more so for fools. Haban Mubatan. Do you think we need luck? There is a rot in Karch, treasurer. Property stolen, merchants extorted, foreigners tormented. Corruption is rank and everywhere. But you are at its heart. Even now, your poison spreads along the East Road to lands untouched by the Order's venom. I hear you hunger for a hairpin. One up for auction at the Da'irat al-Mal. I will play the rival for your heart's desire and draw you from the shadows. Assalamu alaikum, ya Sayyidati. Wa alaikum assalam. I could not help but overhear, Sayyidati, about the perfume. It is not courteous to eavesdrop. Seeing as you are an admirer, you are pardoned. My name is Kabiha, the woman behind the kina. It has a unique scent. Rose. Honey, sandalwood, and if you heard, a sliver of blood. Blood? I should have guessed. I had thought it might be iron. Blood is born from iron, is it not? But, because of that detail, it proves difficult to bring in large quantities. If it is so exclusive, it must be popular amongst officials. I think I caught a scent of it near the treasurer. Ning uses the kina. She is quite taken with its rich mystique, as are many. Curious. You do not look like one who is interested in the art of perfumery. It is unwise to judge someone by how they look. Indeed. Did I not catch your name? Basim. Basim. I must not waste any more of your time. I wish you a wonderful time at the Da'irat al-Mal, Ya Sayyidati. Liar! Do you have any information about the treasurer? Someone who works for the Khilafa? The treasurer? Hmm. I do have something, but... You know, it hurts to give precious information for free. What job do you need doing now? <laughs> Already know what is on my mind, eh? You see, little Finch, the Da'irat al-Mal is not only an important event for the upper class of Kakh, but also for thieves. Did someone take something of yours again? A precious ceramic saucer. Luca has it. He has always been jealous of me. Ah, where do you think it is? I knew I could rely on you, little Finch. You should be able to find it in the crates near his stall. 
Be right back. Here, Little Finch delivers once again. Just the very thing I need to complete my set. I thought this was yours. It is now. Anyway, listen close. I was having my usual afternoon tea when I overheard two ladies speaking about an order they fulfilled for the Dayadat Al Mal. They made a beautiful robe for the treasure with intricate Eastern embroidery. Open your eyes to that. Eastern wear. Thank you, Kong. The treasurer is likely a foreigner from the East. Marhaban. Assalamu alaikum. Yasas. Nihao. Hello. It is the time of year again to fulfill your deepest yearning, to listen to your heart's desire, and purchase what God has shown us. It brings me great joy to welcome all of you esteemed individuals to our annual Dairat al-Mal. First on our exclusive captivating list of exotic odds and ends, we have a stunning statue from India. Made of ivory and crafted by the finest artisans, it will be a perfect addition to any home. Oh, hmm. what do we have? One bidder already. No, two. Calling once, twice, a third. Would anyone hmm. like to best that price? No? So, this piece goes to the lovely lady. Next, we have a one-of-a-kind ethereal beauty. This hairpin hails from the east. And look at the detail on the dragon. Perfect as a collectible, and even better as a gift for a certain lady friend you might have. So, so what is this piece worth to you, Ya Azdekhai? One, for the treasurer who graced us with her presence. Ning, the treasurer. Two. Any others? Hmm. We have a hmm. third there. Who? Oh, who owns it again? Number three. What will you do? How much do you want this, my friends? Reach into your heart. Listen to your desire. Hmm. No one? Then sold to the handsome bearded man. This hairpin belongs to you now, Sayyidi. Now, for the third item. And we thank you once again for making the Dairatul Mal a success. May your purses be ever full and your heart ever longing. Assalamu alaikum. I'm here to see the treasurer. On what business? I have a gift for the treasurer, if she will see me. Only members of the ivory coin are allowed to enter. No brooch, no entry. Assalamu alaikum. You again? What is it now? I have a gift for the treasurer, if she will see me. Only members of the ivory coin are allowed to enter. No brooch, no entry. Assalamu alaikum. You again? What is it now? I have something that she wants a Chinese hairpin from the auction. I also have my brooch with me here. Very well. You may enter. You are a new face. My name is Basim. New to Baghdad, but not to trade. I deal mostly in fine antiques and collectibles. You must have a good eye for detail, then. What have you brought me, Basim? You know what I brought. A man not to be toyed with. Come, show it to me.
Exquisite. Ever seen something like this? So perfect. So delicate. No. But I am surprised that you have not. I do have a pension for them. When I was but a child, my sisters and I would tie our hair with sticks, adorn them with stone. I pretended they were the rarest gems. We had nothing, but we felt that we had it all. There are many reasons why people see me. For advice, a taste of power, and most often, to win favor. Why have you come, Basim? As a fellow collector, I have heard much about you from others. Your extravagance, your taste. I wish to learn- Did they say I was lucky? I loathe the word. When I first arrived in Baghdad, I was one of many seeking my fortune. Now, I have even the East wrapped around my fingers. I clawed my way here where many gave up, preferring to spare their nails. But me? I don't mind a few scratches, a bit of blood. Surely there have been connections. The people you met that helped you get to where you are. No matter what others say, you only have yourself. No one else. Everything prospers when family is harmonious. Family? The word has no meaning. The notions, even more so. Only the self hears the deepest whispers of your soul and accepts you whole. No one lives alone. But we die lonely. In the end, we are absolutely, simply, truly, Alone. How did you fare? The streets are alive with talk about the auction. Rumors spread quickly. It was this woman, Ning. A woman holding the reins. She must have angered many. Angered and enthralled, in equal parts. It is no wonder she kept her identity hushed. Now the upper echelons of affluent louts are soiling their silk robes. Wondering if they are next. The order will not stop here. If they have reached the east, then there is no telling how far they will spread. Did you see it? The Jenny? It... Uh, it is gone now. It is gone. Rest while you can. Our work is not done yet.
door will be the death of you. What are you gawking at? You sound like someone in need of help. I will take it when I can. Then I shall offer it. What is the problem? This house belonged to my mother before she passed away. It holds an object of great value. A treasure, you might say. A treasure? Ha! Suddenly he's all ears! Treasure intrigues me, but it does not rule my heart, nor my ears. Anyway, unless I find a way inside, the treasure is lost forever. As a child, I was quite a treasure hunter. Now is as good a time as any to renew that interest. For a fee? So be it. After the job is complete. Where exactly will I find this treasure? My mother, a potter by trade, hid it inside a blue lusterware amphora. Lusterware? That is a treasure in itself. After her death, my grief was great, and I could not bring myself to enter the house, and now I return only to find the place has sunk. Please, bring- Your birthright shall be restored. Here is your treasure. Ha! <laughs> Was it greed or clumsiness that led you to breaking the amphora? If I had not broken it, you would have. There was no other way to open it. And besides, since when was a lump of copper considered to be a great treasure? Your ignorance betrays you. With this copper, I will make a hundred lusterware vases. Now here is your fee. Mine is a small forfeiture for breaking my mother's amphora. It held sentimental value, you know. Ah, I see our new Abbasiyah bureau is well guarded by an alert and active Rafiq. Bassem, <laughs> you startled me. I was just enjoying some poetry. Oh, whose? The court poet, Sayyida Arib. Her words chirp like the birds of paradise. Ah, yes. I have read her works. My friend Nihal and I used to sneak into the House of Wisdom when we were young. Hours we spent reading of gods and jinn. I always enjoyed this place. The House of Wisdom is not what it once was. Hmm. Is not our friend Ahmad ibn Musa there? He went to his workshop, as I recall. Yes. I sent a message for him to come and help set up this bureau. But he never replied. My spies could not contact him. A week has passed, and he cannot be found. So, one of the famous Banu Musa is missing in the House of Wisdom. Yes. Venture there and learn his fate. It shall be done. People, calm yourselves. The fire was small and has been contained. Allah's wrath is upon us. Most of our books are safe. The danger has passed. Old man, how did this fire start? Old man? <laughs> Fazil Fahim is old. As old as the House of Wisdom, which he commands. Forgive me, Ustadi. I spoke in haste. Can I help? No. The fire has been quenched by the Watermaster's bucket brigades. Who started these fires? Ruffians, I suppose. Enemies of the Khalifa, to be exact. What sort of books were they burning? It is too soon to tell. Perhaps the caretaker of books would know. I am searching for Ahmad ibn Musa. Ah, yes. He has a workshop here, but I have not spoken to him lately. Peace be upon you, Elder. I shall go. I still need to find Ahmad ibn Musa, but I should also speak to the caretaker of books in the library. Bassem, hey! Nine fingers, over here! Nihal! What do you have there, sneak thief? A book. I managed to save at least one from the fire. If they catch you stealing... They cut off a finger. No wait. A whole hand. That is not funny. Then don't laugh. All right, you are in a mood, and I have things to do. Nothing that concerns you. 
Oh, secret hidden one stuff. What are you doing this time? Stabbing? Stealing? Stabbing and then stealing? That is your specialty, Nihal. Just because you lost a finger does not mean you've lost your touch. I am looking for Ahmed ibn Musa. Do you know where I can find him? I may be able to help you. Follow me. Please, don't hurt me. You led me into a trap. I shall throw you where you stand. Spare kindly, Hamid. Then tell me, where is Ahmad ibn Musa? Please, sir. I don't know where he is. Truly, I do not. Then why lead me into an ambush? He... he made me do it. Who is he? Not Ahmad, surely. I don't know his name. For he always wears a mask. And what does this masked man want? He commands me to keep everyone away from the House of Wisdom stick site. Or else... Or else what? He will hurt my head. Like with the others. Please, spare humble Hamid. Where is this dig site? It's in the wilderness. Outside of the city. Hey, let me draw you a map. <clears throat> Don't kill me! Please! Give me more time! I... I almost cracked it! Don't worry. I'm not here to kill you. What are you trying to crack? The book? I said I couldn't. This is not a language I know, but she gave me no choice. Who? A woman named Zahra. One of the scholars here. What is this book? What is it called? The only thing I know is that it is written in a script unlike any other. And I have seen hundreds. The way Zahra talks, it's more of an artifact or relic than a book. I uh, lied about my progress so they wouldn't kill me. I can't read a single word. I don't even know if it's a language. Where can I find Zahra? I don't know. She could be anywhere in the city. I... I just want to go home. All right, get to safety before the guards return. Basim, what happened here? Where were you, Ahmed? I was around. I'm always around. Would you tell me what happened? Are you aware this man works for the Order? He called on me a few weeks ago after they found something in the desert. An ancient mechanism of some sort. They needed me to... And you asked no questions? I never ask questions when it comes to work. Do you? Tell me about this mechanism. It opens a path in the mind, a path to the ancient world. This mechanism somehow seems to open the doors of perception. Have you seen this for yourself? No, but I heard the stories of those who have. They are lost, Basim, because they think what they saw is reality. They think they belong to this ancient world. I knew nothing about the Order being involved. If I did, I would have come to you. I just... I got caught up. You know me. You know me, Basim. You will leave this place and return to the Bureau. I will not tell a soul if you do not. How shameful it is that knowledge always ends up in the wrong hands. Isn't it, Basim? Oh. 
servants, prepare a glass of dead juice on ice and serve it with a plate of honeyed bread and pomegranates. Then prepare the bath salts. I am utterly beat. Paradise is where you find it. فلتصحبك السلامة في رحلتك. Basim, I knew it was you. You are not the only one with eyes that see afar. So, Tabed, you have filled the streets with eyes and spies. Such is the life of a Rafiq. Without my knowledge, huh? Where would we be? Knowledge is a tool, a weapon. It can be used for good or ill. And the Order is using it for ill indeed. What have you learned? Rot runs deep through the House of Wisdom. They are using some ancient book, hoping to build a wicked device. Mm. I have heard rumors of this blasphemous contraption. They call it their great work. The Order is experimenting on people. Lethally. I have stopped them for now. But someone called El Rabisu is running things at the House of Wisdom. Mm. Any idea about who this Rabisu character could be? I have my suspicions about the great scholar, Fazil Fahim. That fragile old man? The clues I have gathered tell me so. Hmm. It could be. The House of Wisdom will be hosting a great symposium soon. An informal gathering of scholars. A lecture, refreshments, chatter. Even the great Arib will attend. Go! Spy out this puzzle with care. But do not throw your blade at the symposium. We don't want to show our hand just yet. Hmm. But if Fazil is guilty and alone, then like a viper, strike. But you must be sure. Before I act, I will be sure. Pardon me. I am looking for the great scholar's lecture. Basil Fahim's lecture about the antediluvian antecedents of humanity will begin soon. In the meantime, please enjoy our ample stock of exquisite delicacies and tasty refreshments. Hunain, you should not be back so soon. I know. I'm still nervous, but I couldn't stay away from my books. I guess we must always do our duty. Wadaan. Hi. Yes? Symmetry of sky and sea. But only in thine eye do these two planes meet. You have read my work. And who might you be? A lover of poetry, nothing more. And of order. Or should I say, chaos. I know only one living poet who loves chaos that much. Ali ibn Muhammad. Are you a fan of his pedestrian work? The rivalry between you two is legendary. It enhances the craft. I cannot choose. You are most diplomatic. But I would rather seek inspiration among these lovely blooms. Good day. This. I have seen this one before. Is this what you wanted to show me? Yes. It reminded me of that object we found at the palace. What is it? A drawing from an ancient book. There is something you are not telling me. You do not want to know what happens behind closed doors. Why? Because you do not know either? Because, as Dilwish says, Sometimes it is better not to know the truth behind the things we must do. The truth, Basim, is that everything is here in front of you. But you refuse to look at it. 
This is about you. It has always been about you, ever since that night. I took an oath, Nihal. To leave my old life behind and walk this path of shadows. And maybe someday you will find the light. But until then, I will walk behind you every step of the way to remind you not to forget who you are. Is that a threat? I do not know. Sayidi, I am honored to make your acquaintance. Good to see more young people enjoying the House of Wisdom. Do you think the great scholar will give a good lecture? Do not waste time listening to his nonsense. I have written many more edifying and practical books instead. On which topics? I have written extensively about sundials, astrolabs, stars and planets, and the circumference of the Earth. Fascinating, Sayidi. I shall read more of your work soon. What the hell? Pardon me. Is Fazel Fahim's lecture ready to begin? Indeed it is. Head inside, if you please. Welcome, one and all, to the House of Wisdom, center of learning in Baghdad, indeed, of the entire world. I am Fazil Fahim Al-Kimsa, first scholar of the House of Wisdom, wisest of the wise. Today, I will shock you with what may sound like outrageous blasphemies. <laughs> Do not fear, good people. Though I am old, my mind remains sharp as steel. Today I speak of mysteries, of creatures from the antediluvian age. Do not the ancient prophets tell us about giants from before the flood who forsook Allah and worshipped false idols? <laughs> Is it not possible these giants built marvels, works of wondrous power, now lost to us? Zahra and Hassan are both dead, slain by an assassin's blade. They are dead. Sayidi, I urge you to hide until it's safe. Uh, uh, apologies, people, but our lecture has concluded. Please, feel free to explore the House of Wisdom's many fine chambers. You call yourself the Great Scholar, Fazil. You who burn books and hope the smoke will hide your crimes. How many did you sacrifice in your search for knowledge? How many did you use, damage and discard in the name of discovery? Now you hide within the House of Wisdom. The house you led astray. But I will find you and I will exact justice for every soul you savaged for your great work. Gatekeeper, those who came before are... are those who shall return. Correct! You may proceed. You are new, aren't you? I don't recognize you. They promised you gold when you volunteered, yes? No matter. What you are about to behold surpasses all worldly riches. Don't be afraid. Are you afraid? This is my great work. I call it Arua. It will take you on a journey to another realm. Why did the first ones leave this world behind, filled with fools, I wonder, and make so few of me? We call this the House of Wisdom, but its foundations are unsound. 
For beneath the House of Wisdom lies the Dungeon of Ignorance. And upon such dark secrets we build our philosophies. Science is the noblest purpose. Knowledge is the greatest power. No. No? Then what? It may be here where lies absolute knowledge. It, it is not how I remember it. Behind the doors, it looked brighter. But in the end, all we see is darkness. Basim ibn Ishaq. How did you find this place? Easy. I just followed the trails of blood. You should not be here. Do you talk to him? Sometimes. Yes. But he does not answer. I do. We have drifted apart since... since that day. But what we have seen back at the palace... This light... These sounds... You cannot have possibly forgotten. Unlike you, Nihal, I keep the past in the past. You call yesterday the past? And this jinni of yours? This repulsive shadow that crushes your chest? Has it crawled back into the past too? No. It is still here. Sometimes, even in the day, I feel its breath on my neck. The nightmare invades the real world, or has always been part of it. This is part of your reality, Basim. I am a part of your reality, too. I am your past. Tell me, will you leave me there? In the dark corners of your memory? I will not. Now, if you could invent a mechanical rug sweeper... Boss him. It is done. And how did it all play out? I'm afraid this is a tale for another day. We will save it for one of our campfires. You have done well, my friend. Better get back to my work. You know how easily I get bored. Thank you for what mm. you did, Basim. It is the truth. You have done well. One last thing. Arib. Was she... involved? Not that I know. But we must remain vigilant.
Basim, the Mahal. I cannot keep them waiting. Are they aware, your companions, that their hunter is hunted in his sleep? If it were in my sleep alone, I could bear it. But it followed when I fled Anbar. Now it stalks me when I slay those I hunt. The ones from the palace, in the masks. Four are dead at my hand. The last, the head of the snake, will join them soon. Why slit its throat when you could loosen its tongue? What? Why would I- The Jinni only struck in sleep. It never dogged you by the day until you reached into that chest. The masked ones prize what lay within. The ancient object that woke at your touch. They may hold more answers living than dead. I hunt my enemies. I do not break bread with them. I took an oath, Nihal. How can you hunt when you are hounded? If you could walk the dark unburdened, you could better serve the light. I stay my blade from the flesh of the innocent, not from the order of the ancients. If you will not ask your foes, then at least ask your friends what slept in that chest, and why they sought it. You took your time. Did you wait up, master? I wait for no man. You look tired. Nothing a little adventure won't fix. What news? Ali thinks the time is right to attack the palace. The Oyun are distracted and the people divided. Divided how? Some are claiming the new Khalifa stole the throne from Abu Abdullah, son of al mutabakil What do you know of him? Little. He was there at the palace, the night his father the night I reached into that chest. Master, have we learned anything more about the object within? Why do you ask? It seems a shame we know so little about something the Order prized so much. Should we not seek to know our enemies better, the better to defeat them? Marhaban Basim, have I interrupted? No. We must turn to the task at hand. Of course, Abu Abdullah. Rebecca tells me you have met his mother, Khabiha. I did. I think she could be first among our foes. She, or Arib the poet, or Muhammad the governor. All three had ties to our enemies. Muhammad ibn Tahir. His cousins govern the land on which Alamut sits. Their protection is all that shields us from our enemies. I cut our enemy's legs beneath their master. Let me strike while their stumps are bloody. I will unmask them and learn their intent. Basim is right. We must act swiftly. Go to the Round City. Investigate all three, but take no further action. Reports back to me atop the house of the previous hill. You well armed. You will not bar me from my guest. This is my house. Bought with my generosity. Bought by my genius. For tokens, favors, and personal dedications, you may find Sayyida Arib in the garden after her recital. Good day. You must be her patron. It is an honor, Sayyidi. If I may. I seek a private audience with the poetess. Do you? I have been moved beyond words by her... words. Symmetry of sky and sea. I only wish to express my sincere admiration. Pretty words. Nearly as pretty as hers. And just as false. We both know what mask she wears. Don't we? Mask, Sayidi. Enough, Sayidi. I know what you are, and I know why you've come. You think I haven't seen you skulking in the shadows. She's no longer party to your plots, your secret meetings, your foolish nicknames. I have scrubbed her clean of them. For I have set a watch on her door. My men dog her recitals. Every letter she's had of you I have shredded or sent back. Sent back? You will find them piled at the postal bureau. Burn them. Bury them. Do what you will. You can choke on them for all I care.
be you, ocean, desert, cobra, dove. All shapes and humors will I embrace. Hello there. Have we met? Come, don't be shy. I rarely bite and I never leave a mark. <laughs> it seems there's no privacy in the public eye. How came you by that letter? Who put you up to this? I work in the dark to serve the light. <laughs> I've met the men who serve the light. It seems its glare oft leaves them blind. Are your masters so blinkered and bumbling? You were warned, you son of a dog. Come a reap, we will set no tongues to wagging here. Yours is the tongue that will not still itself, even when I beg for silence. You spurn the counsel of he who raised you, and without whom you would still be nothing? I raised myself. I authored myself. I have written myself into history. You are banished from my pages. Now be gone! How can I leave you to walls such as these? You're a woman alone, unarmed. Words are weapons enough for me. Then let us see what defense they offer. Take her. There is somewhere the Seyida needs to be, and you are delaying her. It seems that words can summon shields. We will need to make this quick. You should bring him before the Mandalin court. But he thinks only of my reputation, Sara. To safeguard success, I must be palatable, discreet. He fears I am too proud. <laughs> you? Never. I write that love is feral and free, unbound by stricter or statute. Should I not practice what I publish? Practice makes perfect. It also makes enemies. So be it. But let me choose them. Courtiers, caliphs, patrons, partners, so many men have tried to decide my enemies. <laughs> and friends. Though Allah knows I once chose poorly, he hid himself well. And the poet needs patrons, even one so great as Al-Talab. Well, I have my pick. Good. There's trouble times ahead. I will be fine. I have survived six caliphs. I will survive... Six more. Don't worry, Sarah. I'll kiss the rings I need to kiss, but I will not be bound again. Not by anyone. <laughs>